What's going on, cannabis family and hemp family? All the same. Today, I have a very special video for you guys. We're going to be discussing CRC or color remediation techniques. And I know that this is a hot list item on a lot of our lists. So, without further ado, let's jump right on into it. Welcome back guys, I'm Grim from Canna Labs Consulting and uh, today, WKU Consulting, I'm sorry, the uh, website is cannalabsconsulting.com. Um, so today we're going to jump right on into color remediation techniques and uh, basically color remediation is what you see here, um, you know, CRC is basically the use of clays, carbons, or silica gel, some sort of filtration media to remediate the color of your cannabis oil product. Now, I know that a lot of people are um, are trying to go for this. There's some people out there in the market that are calling it Aquatech uh, technology. If you've ever seen the uh, clear dabs, the clear shatter, um, any of that, that's from use of heavy filtration media as well as people that are extracting you know um, lower quality product um, in order to get that color down and uh, some people have a little bit of trouble with their SOPs and using butane to make sure that it shatters correctly so they're also getting a darker colored slab uh, poor material the list goes on and on for the reasons that you will need this um, so that's what CRC is very simple it's running your crude oil through a, um, um, you know, some sort of filtration media to get a desired result. Uh, now we're going to talk about the methods um, in using CRC. There's three different methods here, one of them being a Buchner funnel. Um, if you're doing your winterization properly um, and you're in a smaller scale, and you're using the Buchner funnel basically what you can do is create a slurry with ethanol or some other sort of solvent and actually use that vacuum that's pulling down on your Erlenmeyer flask there or your graduated beaker there to pass that crude oil through that slurry and it will remediate the color as it's coming down into the flask then you can just recover the solvent and continue on your, your uh, winterization process Another method is putting it into the short path. You can put it in your boiling flask and actually, um, you know, if you're doing this, if you're in a short path, you probably want some sort of, you know, steel wool or something like that to kind of catch those residuals inside of your distillation column or your distillation head. But that's basically it, man. You put it down there in your boiling flask and you allow that uh, short path to continue as you normally would run, you know, normal operating procedure, you would just add that into your boiling flask before you add your crude oil that's ready to be distilled. This will also create a color remediation effect. However, depending on the variation of um, clay that you use, this could also lead to a direct um, transfer of Delta 8, I mean Delta 9 into Delta 8. Um, so, you know, if you're not looking for that sort of conversion, which if you've been paying attention to the law is probably not a good idea right now anyway, uh, then you just really got to be wary of that. And the next is a filter stack. If you're used in closed looped um, BHO, PHO, LPG systems, uh, what you're going to be able to do is create a filter stack. Normally, as you're sending your crude oil from the extraction column, into uh, some sort of sieve or molecular sieve where you want to be recovering that moisture out of the crude oil product or maybe you have a uh, an inline winterization thing going on just depending on how your setup is you want to actually be able to before it gets into the recovery vessel you want to be able to um, put that through some sort of filter stack so you can set these up with you know it's easy to find these filter stacks everywhere depending on what you've got I, I recommend it 4 inch no smaller than a 4 inch uh, however you can go all the way up to 10 inch 6 inch just depending on the type of columns and and adapters that you have there to to make use of that 
Um, and, you know, you can find these filtration columns. They look like, you know, perforated discs, pretty much. And uh, this will also enable you to put some sort of uh, filtration between. And then you can just stage them with tri-clamps, uh, media per media, and allow it to stage through. I always recommend going with the media that takes the most amount of force or most amount of uh, remediation out of the crude oil and then staging it down. Uh, but you can kind of work for, you know, you know, R&D kind of what works best for you. And that's pretty much it. That is how to remediate the color. Now down to the juicy, juicy material. Because I know you've Googled if you've watched this video. I know you've probably looked on forums and everywhere else to try to find what is the recipe where I can get a good color remediation. Nobody wants to tell me. Well, lucky for you, we're in the business of exposing methods and exposing information and giving that out freely to educate the community. So without further ado, here it is, recipe of the day. 70 grams of T5, this is my personal recipe. It's never failed me. It does great every single time. This is how I go. There are other recipes that also work, um, but the key thing for me is keeping... Uh, the movability up and being able to scale it and not running through an exorbitant amount of consumables, you know, having to replenish my T5 or my carbon or, you know, any of that over and over and over again to keep up with my throughput because if we're not able to get throughput, then we're not making money. If we're not making money, then none of this makes sense. So this is how I do it. 70 grams of T5 for every one pound of extracted biomass and 30 grams of silica gel for every one pound of biomass. Very, very simple. 100 grams total per every pound of extracted biomass and I stage those in my filtration column. Uh, sometimes I will do this in the short path, but if I'm moving into distillation anyway, uh, chances are that I've probably, unless I'm doing hemp, the chances are that I've probably already extracted in a BHO machine or PHO machine, closed loop extraction machine anyway. So I've set up my filtration stack that way uh, on the back side of my molecular sieve. Now, however, if you're doing this in hemp, the chances are you're extracting with ethanol. So you'd probably want to use this in your Buchner funnel when you're winterizing. Now, if you're in an industrial scale and you're not winterizing with the Buchner funnel, then you want to put this in your filtration stack, um, especially if you're using some sort of lenticular filter. The options are extreme. You know, you can you can go any way that you want to with here, and you can also create your own filter stack if you're using an inline process and pumps and things to move your solvents. You can put an inline filter stack on the back side of your winterization method, uh, pretty much wherever you've got a line running. Um, you know, as you're extracting and moving it over into certain holding tanks or whatever. That's it. That's it. Very, very simple. Very, very easy. Let me move myself out of the way right here. I want to get into some common problems. So the common problems are that the clay actually wants to compact and it makes moving the crude oil through the clay very difficult. So you can kind of fight that with using a slurry. Um, you know, adding some sort of um, solvent into your clay mixture before running the crude uh, through it, or you can go with nitrogen assist, or you can go with a vacuum pump that does a really, really great job. Uh, you know, for instance, the Haskell pumps, those pneumatic pumps are really pretty good at moving this through here. It does take a little bit longer than your normal run. However, uh, that is what it is when you're trying to turn poop into gold you know and uh, it's not magic it's just science so another thing is yield decrease those clays are going to take some of the cannabinoids uh, you'll start noticing if you're if you're used to noticing a 15 percent yield 12 percent yield you're gonna move down to about you know 10 percent 9 percent 8 percent because some of the yield is going to stay back inside of those filtration uh, medias and then the next common problem is opening up your recovery flask or you know if you've got a discharge nozzle on the bottom of there and you're ready to to push it out you find that you've got clay down in your boiling flask and uh, you know that's always a big problem big conundrum so 
I, I always suggest using a two and a half micron filter between filter stacks. If you've got a filter stack, a filter ring, whatever you're using, use some sort of micron paper. So I hear a lot of people advocating coffee filters. More power to you, brother. Go ahead or sister, you know, by all means. If it works for you, then great. I, I encourage you to keep trying it. However, you know, uh, let's let's get real about it and, and kind of we want to minimize risk in every situation. So two and a half microns are ample. And um, that's it for today. So I just wanted to take a second to talk about that. There's a lot of useful information in here. If you need to screenshot this recipe, by all means, reach out to us on canalabsconsulting.com. Leave us a comment or a video, um, a comment or a like down below. Make sure you subscribe. If you do all three, 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 then you will be enrolled, uh, or you will be enrolled in a chance to win a free enrollment into our cannabis extraction education course uh, that's coming up here in December so uh, leave me a comment in the bottom maybe you have your own recipe uh, maybe you've got something that's working well for you maybe you've had some common issues running into these let's hear uh, you know down in the comment section uh, what we can do to help you there and uh, you can always reach out to us on LinkedIn uh, you'll be able to see that in the description. Facebook, you'll be able to see that in the description. Or you can get on our website, canalabsconsulting.com, and send us a question there. Uh, we look forward to seeing you the next time. Share this with your friends. And as always, let's build up the community. Let's get people educated. Let's minimize risk, and let's make some money. Have a great day, guys.